Welcome back, Five Aces. Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here. We are once more back at it with you, Nano and Ultra Lord, aka Oops versus Rusty X, aka Newbie X and Master X. So you may be wondering, this is the third time that we're casting this matchup. That's right, it's not even going to be the last time. Reason for that being, they met in the group stages and then they prevailed and then they met again in the semi finals. So we're going to be uh, casting the second round of the semi finals right now. And currently, Yunano and Oops are 1 0 up after an absolutely insane game one, in, uh, which we've seen in last week's cast. But there is more, as per usual. So, Yunano this time going for his tried, truly tested Soviet gameplay. The Ukrainian care package delivery system has once again been re implemented, reinstated, and it has received a slight nerf as per the last patch but it is strong regardless. Still one of the best uh, bunker busters in the game, if not the best, period. All right, lots of pressure coming forward from Oops and Yunano, just claiming some grounds here. And they are gaining position on Rusty X, yeah? That was a bit rusty indeed. He's trying to combine his forces with those of, uh, of Term, uh, Master, sorry. But Master is a bit late to the party. Reason being, I don't know, he went refinery first. Not the best call. Okay, taking the oil derrick under fire now. Under the vigilant eyes of Yunano's rifles too. So this, oh, this is going to be nasty. Please don't fight into this. Wait a sec. Yunano just doesn't care. He's trying to blow it sky high. But that might come to bite him in the buttocks here. Yeah, that is team two taking a decisive victory because Yunano was first idling, you know, just playing a little idle game here. And then just trying to hard commit to the oil derrick. Trying to make the big explosion happen, but uh, Roland Emmerich, he ain't. Roland Emmerich, he is not. And as a result, no explosions. And uh, not casting Megan Fox for this iteration of the of Open Array either. So rip, rip the dream. Okay, decisive victory here off a, off a player error, to be honest. And Oops now going for his... Uh, is that a trip? No. Oops just went... Uh, he went refinery rush. Uh, refinery to war factory rush. Off of a lot... No, wait, he sold one. All good. I was a bit confused there. Yunano's a bit behind with his build timing. He should have been maybe 20 seconds ahead of where he is actually. Just a little slip up. So team two, it's not looking too rosy and peachy for them. They are team one, because they really haven't gained any ground, any foothold. And wait a sec. Yeah, they also, team two got all the derricks. They're now sending their forces just out on the map. Ah, okay, Master is trying to conceal his army somewhere in the south, which is a curious choice. But double derrick going over to team two. Rangers out for oops. Unfortunately, Team 2 seems to be uh, very lackluster or very light on the light vehicle play. So, not the biggest fans here of the early game outside of just, you know, mass spamming infantry. By the way, this is an experiment I'm casting in the, br in the bright of the day. And the chances are high that there's going to be an interruption of some sorts. My daughter is uh, here in the flat playing with her, with her best friend, with her bestie. And uh, my partner is shopping with the boys so there we go this peace and quiet won't last for long oh sending forth one rifle scout just testing the waters that's smart and now double ranger coming out ranger v ranger combat solid good stuff that's what we want to see here on this channel uh one more thing i would like to uh, one more private thing or, or professional thing i would like to share is recently had a, a politics discussion with um, some of the candidates for our basically the local senate and of the bundesland which is uh, you know mid-sized elections and we're having um we're having national council elections as well very very momentarily in two weeks time and we got invited or my class that i'm the head teacher of got invited uh to the state tv discussion where um youth discussion basically where young people are 
allowed to, uh, they're in the audience and they're allowed to ask politicians questions. And I was really proud of my, uh, of mine, because my class, you know, I prepped them, oh, chunk of damage onto the MCV, but ultimately, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Getting chunked out though, sizable amount of damage. And so basically my class were absolutely stellar. Uh, I prepped them uh, with questions and I was in the first row seat, the first row seat in the audience as well. And they asked, especially the, the right wing fighter, oh my goodness, that is a hell of an aggressive MCV. That's toast. Yep. Zooks are tracking and as a result, complete wipe here. Ooh, gets the defense structure as well. So Master X with a positional advantage here. Gets to retain his MCV. And he, yeah, he's gonna lose a couple structures there. But what a great find from him. Absolutely competitive game here. Looking very good. Oh, the mechanic is patched up. Ultra, it's that's so good and he's built an engineer right to follow up that is beautiful just recovering the situation immediately anyway what i was trying to get at is my my class they asked some real critical questions and one of them was they were asking uh the the person who was there for the right wing party you know our right wing party is notoriously right wing uh extremists by uh, by some accounts i would say and he asked them, yeah, your main candidate is using the term uh, Chancellor of the People. And th the last person who uh, who used that term was Adolf Hitler. Do you think that's a good uh, that's a good look for your party? Do you think that's a good association? <laughs> and, yeah, the, and the guy was kind of stunlocked <laughs> after that question. So I was really proud of my class there. It was too bad I wasn't allowed to chip in myself during the discussion. Really good tank play here from Master X, singling out the rifles, getting some massive damage done. Oops is trying to block off here with his turrets. That's a very smart call as well. Wow! And Rusty X has been pushing through with all the rust. Doesn't matter. Rust doesn't matter if you've got enough tanks. That is a uh, the Russia human wave strategies, you know. As rusty as the Soviet equipment may be, if you've got enough waves, you're eventually gonna make a splash. That is beautiful. Converging armies and basically surrounding the base now. This is just an absolutely great display from Team 2. Great teamwork strategies. Now to be fair, the forces of, uh, of Oops are nestled in behind the turrets and the flame towers here, so it's gonna take a while to push on through. But I think Team 2 has got this. They've got the firepower. They've got the staying power. They've got the army. The ore trucks have been routed already. And more waves are coming. Raider Tech is out here. Two heavies are trying to find a flank. But they're just going to run into the base of Rusty X. So really, I'm predicting... Oh! There's the artilleries. Okay, can they turn the tide? But as it stands right now, I am predicting an equalizer. Let's see if that's gonna hold true. Yeah, I mean, Rusty has got so much stuff. And it was also real fun just being being, sh being on state TV and having, having my students be there on state TV and uh, pretending not to be nervous. Ooh, good hit from the artillery, but at the end of the day, oh, he could have pushed through, he didn't know. Turrets are starting to emerge here, and a Raider Dome just to add insult to injury. That one is just a, a tad bit forward. Just a little, just a little forward. Okay, Oops is trying to spam out concrete walls to wall off this uh, massive, this massive uh, defensive line. Right now, it's not happening. There are three tanks that are going to get intercepted almost immediately. Oh! They're on move command and they actually got some solid crushes on the way. Basically incidental crushes. But, there is always a but, isn't there? The base is still mining for oops. And if this isn't taken care of, then that might be the te the, like what tips the scales back in their favor. Team 1 right now are super far behind. 
They're also losing Harvesters left, right, and center, and by left, right, and center, I mean top. Mostly top. They're also losing their base, because they can't stand up to this unmatched firepower here. Unrivaled. However, they're still mining. And as long there is mining, there is hope. Which is like the age-old uh, RTS adagi. Okay, uh, now the fog of war thing can come into play, because Yunano does not have a uh, oops does not have a scout, so his artilleries even if he queued them all up to uh, to attack move everything, he is uh, going to be firing blindly into the fog of war and he's not going to get anything done. There are two Tanyas out, so who let Tanya in? Who, who was it? Tanya plus face transport for Master X. Now we are cooking. That is the power of the Frenchies. The Brits have basically... They have inherited the British faction trait here. Oh, very ill-fated... Uh, very ill-fated Harvester. Yeah, Tanya can just go pew-pew. She is going to go to town on this army. But the remainder has snuck on by. I mean, this army is forfeit, really. Tanya is just going to gobble them up. Oh, one more tank in the back lines. It's going to get intercepted here. What are we up to right now? There is one artillery out for oops. Tanya with the face transport. Oh, she can be the big difference maker. She can turn the tide of this battle. Most certainly. Okay, there she is. Going for the con yard. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. That was a wasted Tanya. Any opponent who is sufficiently quick on the trigger finger is just gonna undeploy the con yard and that's that. But you know, he's losing a lot of harvesters still. There is now counter artillery out. He needs to focus down Tanya. That's the prime target. Oh, not like this. Counter artillery is coming out as well. And Oops is being pushed back. Once more, he's losing ground. Team 1, definitely not having the best of games here. Uh, yeah. Team 1, because I introduced them earlier. It's a really. There's really no no reasoning behind that metric, which team is team 1, which is team 2. Yeah. Newbie X is playing it super safe. Tanya has vetted up, to, up the wazoo. She just needs a couple medics and it's gonna be a campaign mission, huh? Oh, nice. I mean, not nice about wasting your chain gun ammo, but nice about uh, scouting out the infantry blob. Getting some free chip in. F a four flag pack. Oh god, the flag pack. Flag pack. Ooh. The IKEA flag pack has immediately, yeah, that they've got it just about the, the same amount of shelf life as a as the real IKEA. IKEA flat packs. Nice play here. Gotta say. Um, where's the counter Tanya? He certainly needs um, some sort of scouting information. Uh, the nav set is going up. Speaking of scouting information, here comes the map hack. I see everything. Oh, oh that's a longbow. Whew. No, not like this. He went back into range. Kill. Do they have a counter spy satellite out? Uh, not at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. Never mind. He's trying once more. For the Conyer at this time around, Yunano is oblivious. Ooh, that's gonna be a good one. Nice play here. Nice play. That was a crucial snipe. Tech center down, MCV down. There is no other MCV here. So this base right now is completely vulnerable. Anti-air gun has been deployed, but I fear. Ooh, there's Tanya. Never mind. With Tanya in tow, he's going to be able to push this back all the way. There's a Blackhawk. It needs to snipe out Tanya immediately. And there she goes. With Tanya out of the mix, the enemy Tanya is now able to go in. Rusty X has got a great position. Raider jammers can't jam, jam bullets, by the way, so just a little heads up. And a wave of steel crashing here from Master X. I feel that is going to be the game decider. Yeah, to so much rifle fire, even uh, the Raider Jammer dies. 
and closing on in closing in on the target i feel those are the last death throws for team number two gg called yeah there was no more way back into this gg for game one we are uh, game two that is so this is the equalizer we're now up to a 1-1 draw and we are going to be back in just a hot second with game number three see you then battle control terminated Battle control initialized. Alrighty, brief little time lapse for you. Basically, no time has passed at all. For me, it's been four hours, and the kids decided to have a little, you know, mental breakdown. Uh, combined mental breakdown. Three for three, let's put it that way. We are seeing yet again uh, Oops going for the Frenchies, Yunana going for his trusted Ukraine. We are seeing Master once again doing the Tiberian Dawn build. This is not that effective in open or, uh, in Red Alert because you simply want to pressure with infantry early on, which is not that much of a thing in Tip Dawn. And yeah, it's just rushing an ore refinery and probably just getting an, a war factory out first? Question mark? No, barracks it is. Okay, so no straight up, um, no straight up eco rush. Not the most advisable of strategies. But as a result, Rusty X is just going to get pushed back because he doesn't have the support from his teammate. And this engineer has to venture onto greener pastures. Has to basically take the loop around. Where is that one going? That is so unprotected. Always use protection when going for an engineer. Just a little heads up. Real life... Uh, Real life tips, very applicable in everyday life. Um, okay, double refinery for all four players. There is no straight up war factory rush. Those players just want to get their infantry out on early. And that is very advisable too. That is just what you do in open array. We are seeing some medics being mixed in yet again. Oh, by the way, the map here in question is, I think it's called Boglands. Yeah. Bogland. I've been right for a map name for a change. That uh, makes it one, one for thirty or something. Didn't uh, quite keep track. Okay, war factories are starting to come online, except for Oops, who's going triple refinery? Is this an all-in build? Triple ref. That just strikes me as very odd. That basically screams to be infantry spam into mcv move out into base push very early on but this map doesn't lend itself to it this map is not the greatest base push map at all because you've got really high rush distances no he's going triple refinery into war factory that is an awkward build that is gonna leave him floating a lot he's now on three harvesters you're gonna we're gonna check the econ curve later on because what happens here is um a little prediction league He's gonna start floating like crazy and then he's gonna start falling behind in the harvest account because he simply can't spend the money and he also can't produce harvesters until 36 seconds later than his opposition. Oh no, you need an extra power plant, so it's like more like 40, 48, 48 seconds-ish. And in real-time strategy, time is money. Time is money, time is power, time is everything. Time is uh, of the essence, if we want to put it succinctly. So three harvesters out here. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to float. However, Rusty has somewhat bungled his econ. Despite being on four harvesters here, he is uh, not exactly uh, not exactly having liquid assets right now. Gonna move out with the ranger. Yeah, that is an early move out with the MCV from Oops. But maybe just to secure his double mine. Weird, weird strategy. So is he just gonna pop down maybe a Rax here? No, he's going ultra greed. If he gets pushed out of this position early on, that is just gonna spell disaster. Huh. Light tank is coming out. Okay, he's producing mass light tanks. It is probably gonna get scouted here, yeah. Well, scouting around from the ranger is going to reveal this these shenanigans very momentarily. So I don't know what the what the end game is here. Uh, I don't know. War factory rally point a little bungled up. That is a bit more north than he would like it to. 
Okay. The light tank push has been revealed and the ranger is skirting around the edges of the engagement. My lord. Oh, if Rusty gets a flank on this. Yeah, 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 the pings, the pings. If he does get a flank on this, why isn't he engaging? He gave him enough time to converge. Yeah, Terminator, uh, sorry, an UBX. That was a huge blunder. He had a complete access into this entire juicy rocket blob. That would have been probably a complete wipe. A game changer. A complete game changer. I don't know, he just didn't take those gifts. Oh wow, the medics though. They're out healing a lot of the poke. Jeez! Those medics are going hard. So, Master X kind of salvaging the play, but that was just atrocious. I don't know, Rusty... Newbie X pinged, the, pinged the, the rockets even, then he decided not to go in. It was the best of times to go in. That would have been uh, one of the juiciest flanks in recent Open Array history. He decided not to take that gift. Hey, what can we say? A completely naked Conyard from Unano is probably going to get sniffed out very soon. Flag Truck is back out on the field, by the way. It has somehow miraculously survived. It, oops, he's pinging his own Derek. He, he knows it's there. Yes. Yes, very, very observant. Oh, a Raider Dome, but it's powered down now. So what's the idea here? Oops, is playing as allies. Oh wow, that was amazing. Gets the flank of the MCV and gets to track it with, ooh, very well played though, for you Nano. I think with the double repairs he's gonna be able to salvage. Oh, however, you Nano must not make a decision. He is forced into um, making a, a one or two bad decisions. Okay, is this gonna go down? Oh my goodness, the tank with its last shell gets the killing blow onto the conyard and there is also uh, a deny on the ore refinery. That is massive. Despite everything though, he still needs to contest this push here because that is going to be scary. But that is massive from Milano, who is now forced into relocating his own MCV and it's going to take him another minute or so to just get everything set up, uh, set the back up set back up and online so yeah fantastic play thus far artillery is coming out for oops uh, so newbie x is not having the best of times here his army has not yet fully been revealed i don't know about that my friend the artists are going to town but they they are rotating right now uh rip that helicopter with a little bit of friendly fire too. Wow, good crushes. The tech center, I think it got revealed. He built an immediate tech center. Uh, there is now one dead raider though, thank you very much. Trades a lot of the tech, but he... Oh, and there is so much more to come from Master X. Where is Unano's army? Unano has split his army up north and he hasn't done anything with it just yet. Okay, I think that's going to be the main base completely destroyed for both Unano and Oops. Fantastic play thus far. It feels like uh, Team 2 were the sort of underdogs, but they have managed to sell their hide very, very dearly. Some good chunks onto the infantry blob here as well. He's going to keep on moving, such as not to lose his, uh, his entire army. He's going to go for some hit and run style here. There is a face transport. Tanya, I've heard Tanya. There she is. What is he going for now? By the way, the face transport is revealing all of this, which is also kind of huge. He's drawing two armies apart. There is a push on the other side, which got deflected. Counter tech center is out for Master, who's also. Was it him building the Tanya? Probably. Oh no. Face transport Tanya on the chase. It's you'd think it's already obnoxious the way it is. Ooh, face transport committing a huge mistake here. Rip. So 
Tanya is already annoying as he is, but if she has got a free scout, which just now got picked off, but hey. But as long as you've got that free scouting, it's just so, so good. Tanya is a very strong unit. We're seeing some more fire here. Okay, that's just tanks going into the rear. But shouldn't be anything to write home about. This army is now cornered. I'm so sorry for you guys. Rip, you've got no way out. No way back from here. Oh, the War Factory. It's a double War Factory, though. So Terminator X has some time to play around with. He can still get some vehicle production done. That's all the naked artilleries. I think they need the spy sat. They need to wait for it and then to push, make it a concerted effort because then you know where the enemy assets are. And I really think that is a very good way of, and safe way of, of playing and winning out, uh, closing out winning games. Slowly, the artillery are starting to chip away at the defensive lines, but they've got the line of sight back and. Oops, is not doing anything with his Blackhawks to replenish the vision. Tanya is in the mix here. He got a Harvester. How many Harvesters is Oops on? He's got one. Four. That is not much for this stage of the game, and especially considering that this ore field is soon going to be depleted. Hey, there's an energy lift. Hey, is that NG actually gonna play a role eventually? Would be so cool. Tanya is now rotating over, as is the entire remainder of the army. And really though, what you can do here is uh, your opponent doesn't have line of sight yet, so you just chill out, you never commit into the meat grinder, but you also don't panic. You just chill there for a little. Hmm. The Artis are still pummeling an empty spot here. Mobile Raider Jammer gets targeted first. I really like its inclusion. Mobile Raider Jammers are gonna render half this army useless because most of the DPS actually does come from the rockets. It's trying to set it up just right. I feel like that's so much AOE. Uh, I don't know. I mean somehow they're pushing on through wow okay now the arties are getting snacked up snacked up by the tanks oh that was a good hit though <laughs> not gonna lie the helicopter being sacked mobile construction vehicle is uh, scurrying away with its life for now down go some more of the of the rocket soldiers there is a tanya is that master's tanya Hmm. We're going into mass helipad production from, from Master X. Interesting strategy. There is a Soviet tech center out and that's always a, a risk. Good snipe! Good snipe from, from Newbie X. Manages to get out Tanya. Get her out of the equation. That was huge, at least for now. Two push, yeah. That is true. There is going to be a base war. This time around, it's going to be decided by game one. Man, that is a really competitive game. We are seeing the phase transport with Tanya from Master. Wait, that's not Tanya. Or oh, it is. There is a red pip. Beautiful play. So Master X now needs to make this count. He is once again angling for... Conyard, maybe? Okay, down goes. Yep. That was beautiful. Down goes the refinery. Oh! He's angling it just right. What is he doing there? The huge engagement is also being won here by him. Master X just showing him how it's done. Playing it tip style, but getting away with it with literal murder. Down goes Tanya, but she did her job. She delayed the econ here, and on this side, still there is a conflict going on. And it ain't stopping anytime soon, let's put it that way. 
rockets eating the tanks alive as is customary. But the tanks in converse in, in conversion can now just go on a harvester hunt. Whew, with all that said and done, has the Soviet Tech Center actually found anything just yet? Uh, any hits? I mean, there is a mammoth tank out, so... It's the little things that count. Oh, good tank run by. Six tanks, they're all being split up. And Team 1 does not know how to react. They're sending a mammoth tank. I'm not sure if I like that. The mammoth tank, despite its anti-air capabilities, dies incredibly easy to longbows. <laughs> Because mostly of the turret rotation speed. Oh, that's a waste of missiles, though. Don't waste it on stupid power plants. Okay, here's the first counter push, but there is a Tanya out. Do we have an Iron Curtain? No! And thus, let the culling begin. The culling of the weak. Oh my goodness, Tanya, she's so safely nestled into the back lines. She is going to go ham bony here. Gets pretty much everything for free. Yeah. That was gorgeous. Huh? He's pinging. He's pinging. Okay, the Conyard is taken under siege now. This time around, I doubt that there should be anything salvaging the play. So this main base is going down! As Schwarzenegger would would have put it. However, oh, this just got raided. Yunano has found some critical damage with his needle sting attacks. Not usually his style. He prefers to play it more up front. But hey, down go most of the harvesters. Okay, so what are we seeing right now? Sorry, I just had to check something on my phone. But we're back. We're back in life. Tanya is on vet one. She has quite racked up quite the kill score, gotta say. Good kiting with the tanks here. And Tanya on the chase. Oh no! The Mammoth Tusk has acquired a target. Fortunately, gets away with it. There is the Ukrainian care package drop. Where's the angle? You can now angle it. That was not the best one. It's still gonna get a decent decent sized chunk of infantry. Maybe a tank or two. Uh, quite underwhelming though. Realistically that was never meant to happen. But it forced them out of position as a result the mouth tank dies. And now they're fighting into a fortified base. GG is called. Rightfully so. That is the 2-1 up for Newbie X and Master X. And I think we're going to be casting one more game before we move on to next week's cast. See you in a sec. Battle control terminated. Battle control initial. And we're back on one of my favorite maps. This time, no five, a five hour gap in between the casts. Fresh Rain, the map that has it all. It's got comm centers, it's got tech structures, it's got oil derricks, it's got naval gameplay, it's got landlocked gameplay. So it's got uh, it's got corner expansions of sorts. This is a good map. I really like it. It's produced very, very fun games thus far. We're seeing Master X spawning as France and Unano as Germany. Uh, sorry, and, and Rusty X as Britain. And then we're seeing France for oops, and we're seeing the Brits. So, unsurprisingly here, we're seeing quadruple allies. Why is that? Because despite the best efforts, naval gameplay still firmly in the, in the hands of the allies. I've talked about this multiple times. Why is that so? It's not because of the strength of the sub. You could make the sub cost $1 and make it cost, cost incredibly cost efficient. And it would still not be a viable option in 1v1s and also on maps where you can't gain anything from naval. Because simply put, it doesn't matter if you win your engagement, your naval engagement as Soviets. The only thing you get from that is naval control. But naval control by itself doesn't do anything. It, it, it just needs other things to function. Uh, it needs harass tools. And 
harass tools the Soviets only get a tier two cur a tier three currently. Now, naval gameplay patch has tried to remedy this by moving the um, the missiles up to tier two, so you get some semblance of harassment at tier two. Uh, but I still am skeptical. And as a result, on naval maps, everybody picks allies because even if they if the destroyers were weaker than submarines, which sometimes they can be. That doesn't matter because the destroyers can harass the shorelines. They can do something to your opponent after you win the engagement. That was a freebie here. Huh. Engineer gets away with having basically no protection. Just getting that one Derek. Also, unsurprisingly, we're seeing War Factory from the, uh, off of Double Refinery for all players across the board. We're not seeing any naval gameplay just yet, and that is kind of surprising. Because I would have expected at least someone like Oops of Oops's caliber to try something funny. Engineer, where are you going? Just home. He just wants to get out of here. Get the hell out of Dodge. Very relatable. Alright, so what's our game plan gonna be? Also, I wanna highlight those weather effects. I really love that. Those small little details. All right, Master is the first one going for a service depot. He's going to have a fast expansion, whereas the others are going for a one extra refinery before that. And the economy, oh, even. Master also had his harvester out earlier, so good on him. Did the other NG get sniped? Somehow feel like it. There's just a little push from, from Yunano. You know, just poking and prodding with a light tank. No rockets in this composition just yet. Oh, one. I count one rocket exactly. That is not enough to stop a tank. Just ask anybody who's uh, been on the Iraqi front, I guess. Ooh. Down goes the Ranger basically for free. Rusty X not having that on the radar. He was somewhat too busy recapturing the oil. This is a super vulnerable position, by the way. This is an extremely lucky break for him. Oops, my friend. Oh, You stole another Derek. Okay, they tried hard committing for this Derek, but it survived. Master now has a trademark, damn son. Okay. So just a little bit of a push out. Definitely not, not looking to inflict any critical structural damage here. And we're on four harvesters here for Master X. Four harvesters across the board, I'd say. Uh, five here. That's the usual MCV timing. The, not the timing, the timing is a bit late. 450 but the usual saturation you want to have five harvesters out then you can basically afford um, building from all your queues without running out of money and that is the benchmark okay wide front from the infantry they're expecting an incursion sometime soon in the in the future lucky that nothing was hiding here this would have honestly been a problem for for a newbie x if there were just a little squad waiting in ambush. But luckily for him, no such thing on the horizon. Okay, quiet early game thus far, I've gotta say, especially given how, how high the stakes are. But I guess both players just playing it super safe, trying to not give any wind of opportunity for the other to push in. Ooh, we're now finally seeing a naval yard. And there's a... Uh, Produced a transport which is having the NG as well as two rifles. Right. There is the gunboats, the dreaded gunboats. Are they actually going to turn the tide? Let's see. They're starting to harass a little, I guess. Master X has a solid ground force out though. He hadn't had to invest anything into those stupid naval units. Stupid, sexy naval units.
Okay, we're seeing uh, the MCV pushing forward. Establishing a forward base. I know exactly what he's doing here. He's trying to contest the um, main supply, basically. And Newbie X is going to reveal this very, very soon. There we go. And it's on. Base war, except you can't deploy here. I'm sorry, sir. You're in my way, sir. Cannot deploy here. Cannot deploy here. Man, I think that's going to be another wipe on a conyard. Nope. Gets it to safety rel relatively on time. I think he could have fought this. <laughs> Light tank doing its best to do something of note. Master X. Good army core. Good army core. Oh, look at the wall of pillboxes, though. This is so ugly. Oh, I hate that. They're still so cost efficient, even after all these nerfs. Oh, but here comes a very wide flank. This is going to get some crucial damage done. And the MCV is being pushed away. Good hustle, good hustle. Wait, MCV got forgotten about it, got abandoned. Oh no, not like this. Is it going to go down to player error? This looks like it is. It's trying so hard. Uh, all right, what are we going to be seeing here? There's some more naval action. There's the first destroyers out now. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, he killed an ore truck from Master X. And what else are we seeing on this side of the map? The engagement has not stopped yet. Just not at all. Yunano splitting up his army, like Moses did the Red Sea. And we're gonna be about to commence the harassment. Oh, we had a little lag spike, I guess. Okay, so they had a little pause, but there's the unpause. Fortunately, now we're gonna be seeing destroyer harassment, and that's super annoying. Also, those harvesters are not safe anymore. He's transferring them anyway. Going for a pillbox first, okay. Not the most impactful. <laughs> that's so nice. That uh, that's not only the case that way way back when replays tended to have the pauses in full in the replay baked into it as well, and slowdowns as well. And so that was really really bad. Nowadays you can just you know keep it for nostalgia's sake, I guess, but. You don't need it. Destroyers! Oh my. Not the greatest against infantry, but there are worse units, most certainly. He's killed the entire eco lines. Now, let's see, what about the economy? Eight harvesters and seven respectively, plus four derricks, nine harvesters now. Ooh, the econ, it's not looking good here. Newbie X, despite having so much real estate, has not really done anything with it. He has not expanded properly. He has basically just been dying with his expansions if he tried them. So I don't know. He needs to keep himself alive with the kill bounties, I guess. That's never a good sign. Okay. There we go. Cleanup is now achieved. No, wait, the artillery is still alive for a, another hot second. Enough to kill an entire blob off. Here we have the tank support for the infantry firepower, so this should be very easy for them. Yeah, thank you very much. Destroyers are starting to get annoying, but really, just sending a couple of rifles to the front lines, it's whatever. Okay, now we're seeing a little push out, and the base tug of war has commenced, as is tradition. Alright. So, helipad is out, and the mechanics are starting to do some overtime here. Just, uh, sorry, this time I'm, I'm a little distracted because I occasionally have to glance over at my phone. 
courtesy of my wife being shopping and the kids being out of the house for now. <laughs> yeah, you can't out heal that, by the way. Doesn't matter how many mechanics you build. You can do it against infantry, yeah, exactly. Ooh, there's some Tanya fighting going on. Where was that? Where's Tanya? Oh! Is that Tanya in a face? No, that's an empty face. It appears to be the case. Two tanks in the back lines should be dealt with relatively swiftly. But that's a beautiful way of dealing with this annoying destroyer. The first cruiser is out already! Whoa! So that is an early cruiser. 12 minutes! Okay! So is this gonna get some value here? There's Tanya, there's a Chronosphere from you, Nano. Damn! We've got it all up and down the tech tree. The cruises, when they hit, they hit hard. They're the only unit except the artillery that has inaccuracy. But they do have a lot of spread. To the point where it's sometimes really, really frustrating to play with them because you, they're just not hitting what you want to hit. Oh! Wow! He's going for the service depot and what a volley. What a volley. Tanya still getting some good value. There we go. This is gonna get a little tense here. Oh, he, he sold it just on time. Wow, that was close. Splash. Go the artilleries. Oh, and once that enter airgun is down, he can move the helis in and see the amount of carnage he's causing. That's not gonna be much fun. It's so hard to dislodge this combo now, because where do you build your naval yard before it gets destroyed? One or two of every brand. Basically, every brand of... Uh, of naval vessel. GG's called what? I feel that was a bit premature. Uh, the premature GG elation came out here. We also had some lag apparently. Yep, yep, unplayable. Rip. All right, so that concludes uh, the series for today. We're now a uh, three-one up for Oops and Yunano. If I remember correctly, but Master and Rusty definitely still have a shot at this. There's a game five. So, let's take a look. Let's see what that entails. And um, I'm, I couldn't be more stoked because these have been some really good games. And especially courtesy to the balancing team, but also to the map Fresh Rain. Because it's produced very, very entertaining games on, on aggregate. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Five aces. Out. Battle control terminated.